Good morning. It is so great to see those of you who are here today and for those of you who are on Zoom. Um, I, I'm glad you're home and you know, cozy in your homes and joining us, we hope. And whether you are here in person or through our Zoom live stream, we welcome you. If you are new to this community, we want to extend a special welcome to you. Your presence is a blessing. You may have noticed that our pastor, Angela, is not with us this morning. Her husband, Andy, is very ill with COVID-like symptoms. So out of an abundance of caution, fear of being an asymptomatic carrier, Angela decided it was safest to stay home today. She gave me all her worship materials, and I will be preaching her sermon. Please extend a bit of grace to all of us in these less than ideal circumstances. I now have a few announcements which I would like to bring to your attention. Those of you who are worshiping with us in person have a friendship slip attached to your bulletin. Please take a moment to fill this out and put it in the basket during the collection of the offering. For the time being, we are suspending our Red Wagon initiative of collecting food for the People Helping People Food Pantry. However, the pantry is still in need of goods, which you can drop off directly at the pantry. And the pantry is also in desperate need of volunteers you can go to the People Helping People website to find details regarding how to sign up to volunteer. 
And you also can give directly online to them if you would rather do that. Our church member, Alan, would like to join us for worship in person, but he needs a ride to church. Alan lives in Waltham, and he's fully vaccinated. If you'd be willing to give him a ride on Sunday, please speak to Pastor Angela. If you are worshiping with us in person, we will have time for coffee and conversation after the service in Sewell Hall. Just go through the doors up here at the front of the sanctuary and walk straight down to Sewell Hall. You can also smell the aroma of coffee. We are hosting a farewell picnic for Pastor Angela next Sunday, August 29th. It will take place right after worship. All are invited. But in order for us to plan accurately, we would like a head count. If you plan to attend, please RSVP to Damiano or Dina Trudeau. Details can be found in your bulletin. Let us now center ourselves for as we listen to you share the intro. to heart today. Come and find the quiet center. Please stand in body or spirit and join me in the call to worship. Let this be the welcoming place, the place of return. And let it be built by a love that ends what goes to return here. For it is a love that has been waiting like a candle in the window, ever lighting the way back and never willing to let go the hope that each child will return home. Let it be the place where the only appropriate response to love that has come to the end of its longing is to fill the planet path, eat and celebrate, send up the room, and prepare the party for that which has been lost, has returned to be among us once more. Please join me in singing our opening hymn, number 67, Let Me Enter God's Own Dwelling, and we will sing verses 1 through 4. Mm -hmm.
goodness and mercy, the love you have shown us is more than we deserve. Your arms are open wide, like a parent waiting for their prodigal child, ready to welcome and restore. When we wander from your ways and waste the gifts you have given us, welcome us back so that we may celebrate and rejoice in your presence forever. Through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son. Amen. Thank you, Amelia. That was lovely. Our scripture reading this morning is probably very familiar to many of you, and it comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15. Then Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, Give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country. And he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his field to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him, then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to celebrate. Now his oldest son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. 
Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back who has devoured your property, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. We come to the third week of our welcome worship series. Today, we're focusing on flipping the script and imagining ourselves as the guests. So often, especially in the church, we understand our roles in such a way that we are the ones welcoming the outsiders, the guests, the visitors. We extend our hospitality to them. But the problem with this framework is that it makes us the host of the church, like it's our host. The host usually has ownership over their space, but we don't own this sacred space. It's not ours, it's God's. So should we be the ones discerning who is in and out? When you're the host, you have the power. Things are done your way on your terms. You decide who comes, when they come, and where, when they're invited to leave. The problem with us claiming the role of host is that when we welcome someone new, I think there's the implicit expectation that they worship our way. They do things our way. They assimilate into our congregation. Instead, perhaps we should reframe the roles and remember that this is God's faith. God is the host, and we are all guests. In this way, all power is shared equally, whether you've been with us for a few weeks or many years. There's no assumption that we have to do things a certain way because none of us can lay claim to this building or this community. There's something about an unwillingness to change when it's our place, our home, our church, but when we remember that it's God's church, there's more freedom and flexibility to change and adapt according to the movement of the Holy Spirit. Someone once asked me, if you weren't pastor of the church, would you attend as a parishioner? That was a tough question, believe it or not. In the end, I answered, yes, of course I would. But I had to consider all the other churches in the area. Might I want to attend one of them instead? A different version of this question for all of us is, would you make this church your church home if today was your first Sunday visiting? This perspective forces us to take a step back. Think about the physical space, the people, the ministries, we are engaged in and reevaluate whether we still put this as our home or whether we find a church home elsewhere. This might feel a little uncomfortable, but it's also informative. It allows us to hold a mirror up and look at the church and see what needs changing. If we wouldn't pick this as our church home today, why not? If we would still pick this as our home with a few caveats, what are they? What can we change so that we would all unequivocally make our church home here if we walked into this church for the first time today? Remembering that we are the guests helps us maintain this perspective. God invites us here, and as guests, we can work with the rest of our church family so that everyone feels extravagantly welcome in this place. The famous story of the prodigal son that we heard this morning is a quintessential reminder of God's extravagant hospitality. 
The disciples hearing this story would have expected the younger son to come home in fear, pleading and begging for forgiveness from his father, as he did. And they would have expected the father to be mean and judgmental. He might have pelted the younger son with questions before welcoming him into the home with many conditions for acceptance. But Jesus, true to form, dismisses these to his social norms. Instead, the father runs to greet the younger son, taking the initiative to greet him. The boy starts to deliver his words of confession, pleading for forgiveness, but the father cuts him short. Without letting him finish, the father wraps him in his arms and calls for him to receive a robe to cover his wounds, sandals not only to soothe his feet, but to send a clear signal. This boy is no one's slave. He is my son. When the elder son becomes angry and jealous, the father says, look, Everything I have is yours. The father has now given away all his wealth. No road, no ring, no shoes, no calf, no estate. He's given it all away. And nobody was given time to finish their words of repentance, yet everybody is forgiven. It is the story of a father who gave up everything in order to love without limit. God's unconditional hospitality means loving all and welcoming all without hesitation or reservation. For many of us, it's easier to extend hospitality to others than to receive it. You may have found yourself saying, oh, you shouldn't have, or you really didn't have to, or you went through so much trouble, or wow, this is so lavish. The same goes with God. We find ourselves struggling to receive the hospitality of God because we think we aren't worthy. We have sinned too much. Our heart isn't in the right place. Surely the church doesn't mean me when they say all are welcome, all are loved. Yes, you are worthy. Yes, we do mean you. Henry Nowen, the famous theologian and priest, struggled with depression and he asked, Can I accept that I am worth looking for? Do I believe that there is a real desire in God simply to be with me? Here lies the core of my spiritual struggle, the struggle against self-rejection, self-contempt, and self-loathing. If you struggle with this, no that you are worth looking for, and God does desire to be with you all. And you don't have to change a thing about yourself. This is God's heart, God's home. We are guests who are welcome here, just as the elderly father opened his arms to his wayward, selfish son and his greedy, self-righteous son. God opens God's arms out to us without condition. You deserve God's extravagant hospitality. And I hope you find it here, in this sacred place, among these beautiful people who are also guests of our divine host. Amen. Please join me in singing our middle hymn, Just As I Am. Number 207.
now come to the part of our service where we lift up the joys and concerns that are on our hearts this morning. Before I open it up to the congregation, um, let us offer prayers of healing to Tom Taylor, Paul Moritidis, and Andy Yeltsin. What else shall we pray for this morning? Is there anyone not? Mark Uncle Paul has gone into hospice, so we need to prayer, uh, say prayers of healing for him. And may he heal we need prayers for Sarah, who is driving home from New Jersey in the storm. So, <laughs> prayers of a very safe return go out to Sarah. And we're going to pull. Okay, I'm, I'm having trouble hearing, so I'll say it again, sorry. Chris has asked that we turn our prayers to Afghanistan for the Americans who are still there trying to get out and the Afghans who need to get out because it is not safe for any of them to be there. So please let us turn our prayers to all those people today. Anyone else? Not so. All right, thank you. So, Laura now has a son, Gina, who has cancer, and her breast cancer has returned. So, we need to offer prayers for her. And Michael's parents um, safely made it here from Texas um, yesterday. So, we are very happy to have them here safely in your house. <laughs> And um, yes, so thank you. And were there any other prayers? All right, all right. And I, I want to say a prayer of gratitude to Amelia for um, playing playing for us today, and um, and also for Joe who is actually teaching her. So. And this just came off, so give me <laughs> a minute to put it back on. All right. Let us now be in a moment of silence as we offer up our private prayers to God. Gracious God, you are a God of hospitality. There is none like you that invites all to come to you. You have invited all to your home, to your table, and to your arms. Help us to remember that no one is better than anyone else in your realm. 
that we are all welcome, no matter how far we have wandered. Help us to then treat each other the way you treat people. When we feel possessive of this church and the way we do things, remind us that nobody owns this church. It is your house, and we are all guests, and we are thankful for anyone who decides to make a home here with us. Help us to be as welcoming and forgiving as the father of the prodigal son, remembering that our job is simply to say, welcome home, as we extend your love and hospitality to others. We pray this in the name of your son, the one who welcomed all. We sat at the table with the lost and the least of these, who first taught us to pray together, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The dying is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For many of us, it is easy to set the table for others, welcome them into our homes, our church. And yet, we're also invited to accept hospitality from God and from others, to know that we are enough. We are invited in, each of us, as a guest of honor. You can help us continue to be a place where we're all guests and God is the host. You're welcome to give online at our church's website or put your gifts in the mail. For those who are worshiping with us in person, I now invite the ushers to come forward to collect this morning's offering. And please remember to place your friendship slip in the offering basket as well. Let us now reflect on how God invites us in as we listen to the offering. Mm -hmm. We pray that the gift given this week will help us spread the good news that we are always welcomed into your house of worship as we are. Please bless the givers and the gift given. Amen.
Please join us in singing our closing hymn, A Hymn for Self-Acceptance, which is an insert in your bulletin. son was able to come home because he was ready to accept his father's reaction, whatever that may be. His father welcomed him home with open arms. May this be a lesson to us that God is always ready to welcome us with open arms, no matter how far we have strayed. As you go from this place, May you have the humility to accept God's unconditional hospitality and remember that you are a beloved child of God and you are created in God's image. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.